Hi, this clip is um, an illustration of how to create trace tables and what you use them for. Um, it's very similar to the material that's covered in Unit 5. Um, in particular, it's page 36 and thir top part of 37. Um, within the unit, it handles a while loop. Um, I personally think of all loops a little bit harder, which is why I've chosen it for my example. So as you can see on the screen, I've created design code for a method called count the gaps, um, which is similar to something you've got in one of your computing books. Um, all it does um, is it loops through all of the characters in a string that's provided. Um, it looks for spaces um, and it counts gaps in the string. So if you have one space that will count as a gap, but also if you have three spaces that will count as one gap. Um, so the way it does that is using this last char is space um, variable, uh, which is boolean. So if the last character you checked was a space character that gets set to true, um, gap count is incremented each time you first encounter a space, but not thereafter. Um, so the way that you'd use a trace table is um, most commonly is if you, if your code doesn't work, um, you would use a trace table to find out why in design code. Um, you do this manually. Um, what a trace table really looks at is the execution of a loop. You can do it for a whole method, but it's less um, less useful that way. So in this case, when we're putting our trace table together, we'd be putting our trace table together for the for loop in this case. Now on page um, 36 of unit 5, it tells you that the first line of the trace table should represent the state of all of the variables before the loop is executed. Um, in the example it gives, it's got a while loop um, with variables that are defined prior to the while loop. If you have a for loop defined in the way that I've done it here, um, that's slightly less straightforward um, because before the loops um, loop's been encountered the first time round, the value of i is not yet defined because it's not been declared because it's declared as part of the first line of the loop. Um, so we'll put a little dash in just to represent that or you could put undefined or something like that in. Now we know what our other values um, are going to be set to because um, gap count is initialized to zero explicitly in this function, so that one's zero. Um, last char is space, I've not explicitly initialized. Um, VB will very usefully um, set that to false for you. So that's before the loop has been encountered the first time. And then basically what we're going to do is we're going to take a test case. So in this case, I'm using this string here to pass in. Um, so I'm using a space gap as my um, test string, which is passed into this function here as a string there and is operated on all the way through the for loop. So before we get to the first line of the for loop, this is our trace table that represents the values within that loop. Um, what we now need to do, if I can put my return value in the right place, what we now need to do is to step through what happens each time that loop goes round, and then your trace table represents the, um, as it says on page 36, it represents what happens at the bottom of the loop, um, so as it's about to loop back round. So the first time through, we've got i is set to zero at the end, so we'd be down here, yeah? So i is set to zero. So the first time through, i is zero, a string dot chars i, so that's the zeroth character of a string. So in our test scenario, that's going to be a lowercase a. So we go in here, it says, if this character is a space, it's not, so we can drop to the else, and then it sets last choice space to false. So we know gap count is unchanged and is still zero. Last choice space is unchanged as well and is still set to false. So that's at the bottom of that end four. We know we're still looping because i is less than the string length. So the next value that, that happens, so that gets incremented by one. So again, you're stepping through it line by line. So this if statement, so you've got a string dot chars i, so in this case i is 1, so the the character at the 
first position, first index, is going to be a space character. So this if statement evaluates to true, we drop to this line which says is the last character space. Well, we know it's not because if we look down in our trace table, it's still set to false. So um, gap count gets incremented, last charge space gets set to true, and then we drop down to the bottom of the loop again. So we know here that gap count got incremented, so that's now set to 1, and we know that the last cherished space gets set to true. So that's the next one through the loop. So then it will come straight back up again and execute the next one in the loop because we've not reached the end of the loop. So this time through you've got 2. So you've got the item at the second index, it's the third position, is a lowercase g, which it's helpfully or not uppercase for me, there we go. Um, so a string chars, that, that evaluates to G, so you know this part of your if statement doesn't run. So we drop down here, there sets last charge space to false. So gap count is unchanged by this version through the loop. Last charge space is now set to false, so that has changed. We're at the bottom of the loop. We come back up and we have a look at what happens through the next one through. So at the start, you've got I is incremented to 3. Um, the next letter in your test case is going to be a lowercase a. So the if statement evaluates to false. You drop down here and set the last choice space to false, everything else being unchanged. So at the bottom of the loop, remember this is what the trace table represents, you've got a 3, go on a. We know that gap count is unchanged, and last char is space is also unchanged. And um, hopefully, relatively obviously, you'll have four, a lowercase p, which will uppercase for me, bless it. Um, gap count is still one, and last char is space is false. Um, that's how you do it with design code and doing it manually. It's a matter of stepping through every single thing, um, working out what gets changed and updating them as they get changed within your trace table. There is a slightly easier way to do it, which is um, to implement it in VB. So here's the same thing that's implemented in VB. Um, and basically, you can do the same thing as a trace table with a couple of breakpoints. So, as you'll remember, um, we need the first line of the trace table is going to be before the loop executes. So if I just run this, I've got a little user interface. So if I put my test case in and just run that method, then what you can do, as I've done here in the bottom, is I've defined watches. And the way you do that is you just find yourself a variable, you right click on it, and you just click add watch and that appears. I've already defined last choice space, it's got it in there twice, so I'll just get rid of it. Um, but that's how you define your watches. So you define anything that you're interested in. So we've not hit this loop yet. So um, as it says here, name i is not declared. Okay, fine, we've not, we've not um, initialized that yet. So we also don't know what a string char's i is. But it will give you the value 0 and false that corresponds to the initial values of the variables. And then as we step through it, what these values are here will correspond to the very last line that executes within that loop. So if we go back and look at our trace table, if I just shrink that down a little bit, then that will correspond to that line there. So you've got um, i is 0, a string char's i is a, and in vb you've got that little c after it to say that it's a character. Gap count is 0, last choice space is false. And then if we just play that through, and compare it. So it's the same thing. So you've got i is 1, you um, put your character in the string as a space, gap count's been incremented, and last choice space is true. And similarly, it will match all the way through of, of our, test, uh, our trace table. Um, so this, um, in things like if in M150, if you've done M150, it doesn't quite do it in the same way. It wouldn't have that initial line in there, um, which it's got on page 36. Um, so um, it's up to you whether you think that line's useful or not. For four, four loops, I'd, I'd probably argue that it's not all that useful. For while, while loops, it will be um, a bit more relevant. Um, so that's basically the gist of, of trace tables. So 
this code is available if you send me a private message and send it through to you for you to have a little play with and just have a little go at practicing um, creating trace tables all a trace table does in essence is tell you what happens each time you go round a loop so each time you execute all of the statements within the loop so it's not like a line by line type trace which I think is possibly where some of the confusion has come from um, so I hope that's um, useful um, do let me know if not and um, I hope that's um, going to come in handy for the assignment um, so do let me know if there's anything else you'd like covered and um, thank you very much for watching.